Mike three. is hot on broadcast desk. Hello, hello, Mike check one two, Mike check one two, live in the studio. Mike check, Mike check, one two three, one two three. Check uh, testing one, testing one, Mark Brucenich here at the Hudson Media Group, testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three, Mark Brucenich.
Ladies and gentlemen, here we are again, Hudson County View, live and uncut. I'm your host, the guy that lifts barbell plates and eats T-bone steaks and a Demeter that's still sweeter than a chocolate cake, John Arhitis, and we have a lot to talk about. Of course, we are in primetime election season here at Hudson County. A lot to talk about in Hoboken, Jersey City, and beyond. So first, let, let me just give you a brief rundown of what we have on the show for you today. So we're going to be talking about the latest on this pay-to-play resolution that uh, keeps rearing its head in Hoboken, specifically in council chambers. You could probably guess what happened there, but we're going to give you all the particulars on that one. And next up on the list, we're also going to talk about the first Jersey City Board of Education debate in uh, 2019 that that was hosted by the Hudson County Democratic Organization Black Caucus and both sides came out swinging. We got some, uh, we got some tidbits there you're not going to want to miss. So we'll give you all the highlights. Then on top of that, we're also going to talk a little bit about reg choice voting, something that uh, is getting some attention nationwide and three of our Hudson County lawmakers have put their name on pieces of legislation uh, and they're hoping to see this come to the Garden State before the presidential election. We're going to give you the details on that as well. And uh, as what, on top of that, we're also going to be talking about the Airbnb referendum question in Jersey City. This is looking like a very expensive race. Both uh, sides are up on TV. Uh, that By both sides, of course, uh, vote yes and vote no. Uh, the mayor and council, of course, want to see this go through, and the Keep Our Homes group, the Airbnb supporters, do not. So we're going to give you all the details on that as well. And we also have a few other uh, quick hits, as I like to call them. Uh, we're going to tell you about what's new with uh, Frank Rea, who, as we first reported, was convicted of vote-by-mail fraud in uh, connection to the 2013 Hoboken municipal elections. That conviction was back in June. And so all that and a whole lot more will be back in just a moment with a word from our sponsors. It takes more than a state-of-the-art medical facility to make a great hospital. It takes a team of dedicated medical professionals. That's the Jersey City Medical Center, Hudson County's number one hospital. Medical teams consisting of New Jersey's top doctors, magnet award-winning nurses, and accomplished hospital associates, all committed to your good health. That's what you have at the Jersey City Medical Center. Make Hudson County's number one hospital your first choice. Visit us on the web at BarnabasHealth.org. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, Jersey City. Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. Ladies and gentlemen, back and better than ever, John R. Hyde is joined with Mark Businich, Hudson County View Live and Uncut. Mark, always good to have you. Mark, John, good to see you. Uh, so let's talk about the Hoboken Council meeting. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you got out there, out of there in three hours, which I guess is a uh, pretty, pretty light one. But That's uh, the barometer these days, John, you know, yeah. three hours or less, yes. Yeah, and I mean, you know, you didn't even stay till the end. So, you know, I guess you could call that a, a moral victory. Actually, I did stay to the end. They wrapped up right uh, before I interviewed a councilman at large, James Doyle. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. All right, so that is a really fast meeting by Hoboken standards. So, you know, count your blessings on that one. But uh, all kidding aside, I do want to talk about about the pay to play resolution that mm -hmm. uh, everybody is familiar with at this point. I mean, we've discussed it right here in these seats at least twice, maybe more than that. But, uh, you know, in a nutshell, this is something that is a non binding resolution, which most resolutions in general are. Mm -hmm. And it's just basically to get the candidates up for re election to commit to, it, to following those pay to play rules that have mm -hmm. been on the books since 2011, right? Uh, so, the particulars, if you could, Mark. Sure, of course, John. Yeah, it was uh, uh, very interesting to cover last night's uh, Hoboken City Council, and uh, sure enough, the pay, pay to play uh, uh, resolution did come up again, and as many of our viewers know, you reported on it, and uh, I reported on last night. This is the, already the third time, right, John, that this has come before the City Council, and yet it was tabled again. Here was an opportunity for the Council to vote on it, but to the uh, chagrin of the sponsors, Councilman at Large Jim Doyle and Councilwoman at Large uh, Emily Jabour, the uh, City Council decided to punt on it again. And in fact, uh, the mayor even called it, right, if, we, if our audience recalls, they even called a special meeting last week, last Thursday, 
so that the whole council could be there in attendance to vote on this particular resolution. But five of the council candidates that are currently running in this uh, re-election cycle uh, did not attend, so of course uh, there wasn't even a quorum for an, f enough of a to make up for a quorum I to vote on it. I think that's actually uh, four, Mark, because Councilman Cunningham was one of the council well, that's members. That's correct, and he's not, and he's decided not to uh, run in this re-election cycle. That's correct. Thanks for that clarification, John. Sure. Um, so, uh, but yesterday, sure enough, um, when the issue of the resolution came up yesterday, uh, Councilwoman Second Ward, Councilwoman Tiffany Fisher had, Fisher had the first word to say by accusing Ravi Bala lodging a really scathing accusation against him, saying that, um, saying that this uh, resolution is really all about uh, the mayor wanting to un unwind the city's current pay-to-play uh, rules that are on the, that's been on the books since 2011. And then of course, we followed that up, uh, her comments up with an interview with uh, Councilman at Large James Daw to get his reaction to what she had said. And he said that, wow, he was almost speechless and he was flabbergasted because he said that she was like entertaining this conspiracy theory. Yeah, his that, words were fabricating a conspiracy. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's a good time to go to the clip. Uh, we'll mm. let you guys take a look at uh, what was said at the meeting. Don't take it from us. Take a look at uh, what was said on the day is here. It started actually during contract negotiations with our local municipal workers union when the administration got a union leader to write a letter to the council asking to rescind our pay to play laws as our municipal unions, so our municipal unions could make bigger contributions to elected officials. So just think about that for a second. That is what started this whole process. I personally can't support even voting on this or the other one without having a parallel resolution that would actually walk through and outline all of the politics um, that have occurred on this to date. So with this, I'm going to make a motion to table this resolution. Councilwoman Fisher's slanderous comments about the mayor and uh, it was a little bit shocking she's she and she's fabricating a conspiracy that, that the whole this that the <laughs> that the the mayor put the union up to request a, a, a legal opinion uh, it's just it's so far-fetched it's it's <laughs> I'm a little speechless frankly but it's a simple resolution all it says is during the campaign because there's uncertainty now as to whether our laws should be changed, although they still are valid, we should just all play by, we should, they should be enforced and everyone should play by the same rules so that some candidates don't disregard the law and take ex excessive amounts of money and others follow the law and take less money and then there's an unfair, uh, unlevel playing field. And it's... Whatever machinations she feels may have occurred, she still can vote yes that she thinks it would be okay for everyone to to be playing on the same playing field. And we'll be looking at, I will be looking at her ELEC reports to see perhaps maybe she, maybe she's chosen to disregard the levels and and will and that might be what's motivating her to uh, you know be, to refuse to vote to uh, enforce the laws as they are on the books. Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River, offers a quality of life you deserve in 10 high-rise rental towers with amenities such as the on-site Newport Path subway, light rail and ferry service, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Sears, JCPenney, Macy's and Target. Morton Williams Supermarket is just outside your front door. A health and fitness club, spa, skating rink and medical facilities are also on site. NewportNJ.com Enjoy the New York skyline from Newport Town Square. Manhattan is just one path stop away or quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. 12 screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Want to visit Newport? Stay at the Western or Marriott Hotel. Go to NewportNJ.com for details. Newport has luxurious towers, great restaurants, shopping, New York skyline views, schools, playgrounds, a marina and yacht club, gym, spa, fine wine, fine living. It's incredible. It's you. NewportNJ.com. Newport. Live like you want. The Jersey City Medical Center. You know it for its award-winning, life-saving ambulance service. It's also your health hub. With health and wellness locations staffed with certified professionals all through Hudson County. 
the Jersey City Medical Center. Here to help you with your healthy, here when you need us the most. The Jersey City Medical Center. Visit us on the net to learn more. Jersey City Medical Center, Robert Wood Johnson, Barnabas Health Facility. Let's be healthy together. Well, welcome back, everyone. This is uh, Mark Businich. Uh, welcome back to Hudson County View Live and Uncut. I'm joined by my colleague, John Hines. John, welcome back. All right. Thanks, Mark. So, uh, yeah, as everybody saw, it was an interesting meeting. Uh, you know, no uh, shortage of fireworks in Hoboken. It doesn't matter if it's July or if it's October. There's always something entertaining going on. I think it goes without saying. So just, uh, I guess, in conclusion on the pay to play, I mean, mm. what do you, th it doesn't look like we're going to get a vote before the election cycle, but I guess the question is, does it matter? I mean, it doesn't seem like like, this is really like a life-altering measure that they're putting in front of the council time in and time out. Would you say that's a fair uh, estimation on all accounts there? It is. It is, John. And I did ask both uh, Councilman uh, Jim Doyle and Councilwoman Emily Jabour, will they continue to uh, put this forth before the council? I mean, there's less than six weeks right before the elections. Less so, than five, yeah. Right, less than five now. So, um, so ask them if they were confident that they think that this will uh, come up for a vote. And... Uh, they didn't seem to very. They didn't seem very optimistic, but they also stressed that it's important for the. Uh, they made the point that the uh, body, though, won't even allow entertain for a discussion to happen. They won't even allow to hear what Corporation Council has to say in the matter as well. Right. All right. So let's move on for a moment. Let's uh, let's take a look at one of the other big elections this uh, November fifth. That's the Jersey City Board of Education race. And the big fight there is, of course, the Education Matters team, backed by the Jersey City Education Association, and uh, the Change for Children ticket. And they've uh, they faced a little bit of heat at that debate Monday night, hosted by the HCDO Black Caucus, as I mentioned earlier, because there is a super PAC helping them out that is backed by the LaFrac organization. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I don't know what you got to watch, Mark, but uh, for those that got to see the clip uh, from the debate, they were able to tell that there were quite a few people and quite a few candidates that seemed to be put off by the fact that this developer is uh, investing mm -hmm. so much money into the race. Now, that led to some heated exchanges, uh, surprise, surprise, and uh, one was between the board president, Sudan Thomas, of the Education Matters team, going at Ashidia Johnson, and vice versa. And uh, you may have noticed that Ashidia uh, Johnson was quite critical of uh, Sudan. You know, she said that he had no business talking about mm -hmm fiscal responsibility given that he had to leave a board meeting because his car was repossessed and he was part of the problem with the school budget since he's on the board obviously and she was also critical of this whole situation with the Jersey City Employment and Trading Program mm -hmm. when he was the acting executive director there was of course that major allegation that he wrote checks to cash and that's now a lawsuit, and so I guess we're going to let the courts decide. But uh, safe to say that this is not a uh, friendly fire type of race here, Mark. It doesn't seem like it is, John, and it looks like it will only be uh, heating up in intensity as the elections approach. Um, indeed, as you said, many in the uh, audience or many of our viewers have said they're questioning why developers are getting involved in this race. And wasn't it too long after you covered this particular meeting, John, at the same organization, Children, uh, if you, uh, Change for Children? Change for Children, that is. Uh, they just recently, their campaign, which is backed by the LaFrac organization, right? I mean, I think they received something like $250,000, which was in your reporting, uh, that they put out this report card citing, uh, giving an F to, in like, I think five or six, maybe up to seven different categories, and how they feel that the current Jersey City BO, uh, BOE, which is headed by the Education Matters First uh, uh, ticket, uh, have failed in all these different aspects such in governing, such as... Uh, um, the, the lack of funding or the shortage of funding, as well as the cancellation of sports programs and um, the lack of uh, health insurance, uh, health care uh, for full-time teachers. Yeah, I mean, the, the report card came out. It actually hit uh, the windshields of our cars, including my own, on uh, Saturday night into Sunday morning. And uh, yeah, it was, it was seven different topics, and you basically touched on it uh, just to clarify one point. The thing about health care was saying that it was actually costing the teachers more, not that they weren't having health care, it's that the mm. new plan was actually more expensive than the old one. Mm. Of course, the Education Matters team responded in kind and said, you know, that's not what happened. And they said, we brought back our sports. We're the ones that made sure that the school funding didn't get worse than it was. And, you know, they also talked about lead remediation. They said, mm. we're doing everything humanly possible to make sure that's happening. So look, I mean, uh, 
obviously mailers don't vote, but I guess what we're going to have to see is, is this going to increase turnout, decrease turnout, or keep it the same? And it's early. It's tough to say. Sure. But with that, it's uh, time for another commercial break. So just stick with us. We'll be back in just a moment. Good Friends Self Storage in North Bergen, New Jersey is a fully climate controlled facility equipped with state of the art security, packing supplies, a refer friend program, and multiple loading docks convenient for commercial use. Located just off of Route 3 at 4301 Tunnelly Avenue, Route 1 and 9. Call 201 867 2444 or visit us on the web today. Good Friends Self Storage, let us be your good friend. Consumer Carpets, 3408 Kennedy Boulevard in the Jersey City Heights, your one-stop store for residential and commercial floor treatments. Carpeting, linoleum, tiles, laminates, hardwood floors, area rugs, remnants, all major brands, all in stock. Free estimates, same-day installation. Consumer Carpets, it's savings, selection, installation. Credit cards and debit cards accepted. Financing available. Consumer Carpets, price to fit your budget, installation to fit your schedule. On the net at ConsumerCarpets.com. Consumer Carpets, Jersey City, 201-792-2712. And we're back, Hudson County View, live at Uncut. John R. Heides and Mark Businich. So once again, for what feels like the, I don't know, at least 20th week in a row, we're talking about Airbnb here, Mark. So uh, <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, this is something that's a long time in the making. Mm -hmm. For those of you that haven't been following along, of course, on November 5th, Jersey City voters are going to have the option to vote on whether or not they want new short-term rental regulations that would include things, uh, provisions, I really should say, such as a on-site owner having to be present to rent mm -hmm. out the property. Um, you know, that's a big one. And also there's some smaller provisions about mm -hmm. how many rooms can be rented out depending on how many families or how many floors are in the home. So I don't know... Uh, if, you, if it's been uh, airing in New York where you live, Mark, but over here in Jersey City, I mean, the, the TV ads, the digital ads, the mail, I mean, I got probably, since I did that story on, uh, I think that was Sunday, mm -hmm. I think I probably have three more mailers. So this is, a, uh, this is a high octane campaign, if I do say so myself. Your take? Yeah, it looks like, sounds like there's a flurry of advertisement, advertising and advocacy going on right now, John. And uh, just like you, I've had uh, reported plenty on on this particular issue from uh, the Airbnb hosts and short-term rental community side, as well as talking to the uh, mayor's office. Uh, and as we reported just last week, right? I mean, uh, while Airbnb hosts and reps have been saying that, well, this particular ordinance, the new ordinance, remember now, because the first one was back in 2015, but the new one that includes regulations, which you just ticked off some of them, um, the host, the reps and the hosts are saying this is going to lead to a complete ban on short-term rentals while the city in turn is saying, well, Airbnb basically agreed to all these same regulations in uh, Boston, so why can't they do the same in Jersey City? Yeah, I mean, uh, well said, Mark. I think that's a good summation of uh, where we're at in just a couple words. Um, so it looks like this is going to be nasty, and it looks like, mm. uh, you know, the time for kid gloves is coming past. <laughs> so... Uh, I guess really... Sounds like there's a really a lot at stake here, John. Yeah, no, look, I mean, obviously, uh, you know better probably than me about what happened with Airbnb in New York. Obviously, uh, things didn't work out the way they would hope. I don't think that went to referendum, right? I don't believe it did, no. But it, it looked like they came up on the short end of the stick, though. They did, and they did petition. Obviously, they, uh, they advertised and advocated as strongly as they're doing in Jersey City, but the council, city council in New York uh, insisted on regulations as well. So basically, uh, you think it's a fair assessment to say that this referendum is really going to decide all the uh, major business that Airbnb could do this side of the Hudson River? Well, um, again, from when I, you know, it's interesting because at downtown right now, when, we, when I covered the, uh, a rally and a campaign launch about two weeks ago, one of the uh, uh, short-term rental property owners there, owners there who owns a property in downtown is said if this ordinance goes through, well then basically it's going to shift all the Airbnb short-term rentals from the downtown and just move it into the other neighborhoods. So it might not necessarily mean a complete elimination of short-term rentals in Jersey City, but right now where the downtown, which is where all the high-rise buildings are, where about 70% of these short-term rental properties take place, it looks like it will definitely lead to a reduction. Yeah, 70% is a big number. Uh, do you remember where that's coming from? 
Uh, that's what the hosts and the reps had said at that rally outside City Hall about two Saturdays ago now. Okay. Because uh, I, I, I remember when I was with Councilman Solomon, I guess it was about two weeks ago as well, give or take a couple days, he was saying that the uh, uptake, up, uptick in short-term rentals in the past, I think he said just year, is already 10%. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's fairly significant. And you could understand that, you know, people always are looking for affordable housing options in Jersey City. And, uh, you know, there's also complaints about noise and quality of mm -hmm. life, which has been what Councilman Solomon, the mayor's office, right. Councilwoman uh, Prince Area have been talking about. So, you know, as far as quality of life goes, that's going to be a big part of this campaign, I think, as well. And, uh, you know, it's going to be really interesting to see this end result. I think it's going to be a razor tight decision. What do you think? It really is. I mean, and when you think about it, it's such an interesting dynamic that's happening here, right, John? I mean, um, the Airbnb hosts and reps have said, well, look how much economic activity Airbnb short-term rentals have brought forth to the city. And there's no doubt that I guess that there have been some residents that have benefited because of the, when Jersey City decided to allow Airbnb come into the city in 2015. But then you could see uh, the other, from the other perspective, where Councilman Solomon has said, for example, he's heard from his constituents that uh, that residents didn't move into a particular neighborhood because they wanted to be subjected to late night parties and uh, uh, and having, I say, a mini hotel on their uh, on their street. Yes, well said. Again, Mark, uh, thank you everyone for checking that segment out. We're going to have one more quick sponsor break. Don't go anywhere. Panapinto Properties, Jersey City, shaping the workplace with state-of-the-art office space and an address your company desires. Building residences that define your home environment. Adjacent to all modes of transportation. On-site parking available. The right address, the right lease. 201-521-9000 or visit on the web at panapintoproperties.com. Panapinto Properties, building Jersey City for everyone. Introducing the MyJCMC app, powered by Practice Unite. The free MyJCMC app puts the power of healthcare at your fingertips. Go to the concierge for access to referrals, scheduling, and appointments. See emergency room wait times and get directions to Jersey City Medical Center health locations. Read the latest JCMC news through their social media feed. Find a doctor and more. The MyJCMC app. We belong to you. Rama Jewelers, located in the Lyndhurst Shopping Center at 413 Valley Brook Avenue, Lyndhurst. Come for all your jeweler needs at Rama Jewelers, where you will find a fine selection of necklaces, earrings, rings, and bracelets. Choose from one of our complete sets, our many signature items, or find the perfect engagement ring. Come on down, that's Rama Jewelers at 413 Valley Brook Ave, Lyndhurst. Call 201-939-5784 or visit us online today. Hey, ladies and germs, Hudson County View, live and uncut, John Arhitis, Mark Businich. Uh, another story that we wanted to touch on today is about ranked choice voting, as I mentioned during our intro. And uh, this is basically something that would eliminate the need for a December, or in some cases, a June runoff. So we have three legislators in Hudson County that have put their name on pieces of uh, legislation that they would like to see approved before, uh, well, really as soon as possible, but before the presidential race next year. So we uh, had a chance last week to sit down with Hoboken Assemblywoman Annette Chaparro. So let's take a look at what she had to say on this topic and then we're going to weigh in. All right, sorry about that. Obviously a technical difficulty, uh, so apologies for that. But basically, reg choice voting, again, like I just uh, said a moment ago, was that this is something that would eliminate the need for a December or a June runoff. And the reason for that is because, let's say there's four candidates on the ballot, you would check, okay, like I want, you know, candidate 
uh, A to be my first choice and candidate C to be my second choice, candidate three and candidate four, they, you know, however many are on the ballot and you rank them all the way through. Mm -hmm. uh, this is something that we have seen in, uh, in, a, in a couple states across the country. Honestly, I don't remember off the top of my head, but mm -hmm. uh, this is something that... Uh, I think Maine is one of them, John. Yes, yes, Maine, I think, is one of the most recent ones. And uh, this is something that uh, certainly would shake up the political establishment, I think, in New Jersey. Uh, mm. Mark, what, what do you think about this possibility here? Well, it sounds very interesting, uh, and um, it was interesting to hear what uh, the Assemblywoman, Annette Shapiro, had to say about it. I guess just to clarify for me, John, I mean, uh, as far as the, the main, it seems like the main benefit from this is to prevent uh, runoff elections, correct? Because as we know, um, there have been arguments made, right, from both sides of this debate when it comes to runoff elections. Those candidates who say, uh, well, the ones who won, say, outright or, or, more, or just barely won in a race um, or barely lost in a race insist that, well, maybe they need a runoff because they need to definitively ensure who was the, the victor in the race, whereas the other camp says, well, uh, second time around, you're not going to get as many voters as you did the first time the race was, um, the race was on. Uh, and in fact, it only leads to more expenses for the uh, community and the, and the town and citizens. So um, I guess in, in that sense, that would be the biggest benefit from, uh, from this type of new voting system. Yeah, so I mean, obviously, not, this is something new, something that not everybody's familiar with, but they're already doing info sessions in Hoboken, uh, sponsored by the Assemblywoman, and I believe uh, Councilwoman Jabor uh, sponsored the most recent one as well. I know they were both in attendance. I believe that was at the Hoboken Library, but regardless of the location, uh, to uh, touch on what you said, let's talk about uh, why people don't particularly like the extra uh, month of voting. Mm. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, number one, it, for the December runoffs, that basically puts um, an election that is somewhere in between Thanksgiving and the holiday season, mm. whether you celebrate Hanukkah, Christmas, uh, Kwanzaa, anything in between. Mm -hmm. You know, it's right there. Uh, that's number one. So obviously people have family commitments, people have time off of work, and people generally are paying attention to politics, right? Mm. Uh, and then the other thing about that is also keep in mind, like you said, like, a runoff is a completely separate election, so they have mm -hmm. to do it all over again. You know, the Board of Elections have to be paid, the clerks have to be mm -hmm. paid, um, you know, certain city offices have to work overtime or employees, and, uh, you know, so yeah, that's added expenses. Uh, you know, of course, the major uh, a lot of people believe that regardless, the majority should rule, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, take a look at Hoboken last year. They haven't had runoffs in, uh, I believe it's six years, might be even be seven years, but it's six or seven years, and they brought the runoffs back, the standard runoffs, mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. We could see that in the fifth or the sixth ward, as you know, that there's three candidates in each of those uh, municipal mm -hmm. ward races. So, right. uh, but the point is here, this would, they call this the instant runoff as well. And the reason for that, I think is fairly self-explanatory because you don't have to go to actual December or June because you've already checked who your second option is. So that's basically the, the, the reason for that. I see. And uh, there were some other topics I wanted to just do really quickly. So as far as Frank Rea, uh, a former mayoral candidate and council candidate, of course, he was convicted by vote by mail fraud. Uh, back in June, his sentencing date was scheduled for this morning. It has been postponed at a date to be determined. So we're going to let you know what the future holds there. Also, the New Jersey Office of Administrative Law ruled for a reprimand for Jersey City Board of Education trustee Lorenzo Richardson stemming from an ethics complaint filed in 2016 saying that he improperly filed complaints against fellow board members. So with that, we're going to call it a day. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Thank you, Mark, and uh, we will see you next week.